Here's a riddle for you. A hopper of ditches, a cropper of corn, a wee brown cow with two leather horns. Do you know what it is? No, it's not a rabbit. Rabbits are blow-ins. It's the hare, the Irish hare, and she's been here since the time of the old gods. Vanishing as quickly as she appears, moving as silently as a ghost. An inherent part of Ireland's culture, the Irish hare appears as mystical and mysterious as the land itself. From past to present, this fairy tale reveals the magic behind an ethereal creature. Now facing her biggest challenge yet, modern Ireland. Will her reality be even more intriguing than her legend? Or will she truly become a phantom of the Irish landscape? It's a 50-50 chance. The Irish hare has been around for 20,000 years, before the Ice Age thaw. She's one of a kind, found only in Ireland, and arguably its oldest surviving mammal. With long, distinctive hind legs, hares are agile and quick. They can travel at speeds of up to 45 miles per hour making them difficult to capture. Among the ancient Celtic storytellers, these characteristics gave them an elusive, almost supernatural quality. Legend has it that one fine morning, Oisin went out hunting. Oisin was Finn McCool's son and a member of the Fianna and of course as a warrior he was a fine swordsman and he had a great shot with the spear and he was a huntsman as well. He could run through the forest without leaving any trace of his passing. Well this fine morning he came to a clearing in the woods and there he saw a hare cropping grass and he said to himself that'll make a fine breakfast and he lifted his spear and he threw it but the hare was too fast for him. And all he did was injure its leg, but he decided to follow it. And he followed it through the woods and through the bushes until he came to a door in the bushes. And he opened the door and he saw a trail of blood. And he followed the trail of blood into a huge chamber that was beautifully decorated with painted walls and with lights like stars. And sitting in the middle on a throne was a maiden and she was wincing in pain and she lifted her skirt and she said look what you've done to me Oisin you're going to have to remedy this promise me one thing anything said Oisin promise me that you will never hunt hares again I promise he said and he never did The legend of the female hare has a strong place in Irish folklore. She is independent, feisty and solitary, joining with others just to mate, and only then if she's in the mood. Females are larger than males and the dominant ones. She keeps her newborn in forms, structures like nests hidden in the long grass. The ancient Celts, after a harsh winter, would find eggs in abandoned forms, a source of food at the start of spring. This led to the belief that hares brought eggs to the people in springtime. It's where the Easter egg had its origins. But of course, hares don't lay eggs. Instead, the abandoned forms provide ready-made lodgings for ground-laying birds such as lapwing and quail. A 
As for the hare's magical powers, well. The hare has always had a strong place in Irish mythology, right back to pre-Christian Celtic times. In fact, those of you that are old enough to remember the Irish coins pre decimalization it was a hare that was on the thruppity bit. And the hare is supposed to be the goddess Istra, the goddess of dawn, abundance, renewal. And if ever you look at a full moon, if you look at it in a certain way, you can make out the shape of a hare holding an egg. Maybe that's the cause of the rumour. In a land where storytelling was a means of communicating, a reason to come together, a method of spreading wisdom, the Irish hare was at the heart of a revered tradition, an inherent part of its cultural history. It's no wonder then that the Irish hare has, down through the centuries, been embraced and beloved by the people. A key figure in Celtic mythology, so significant was she, the Irish hare was officially recognised and celebrated when she appeared on the nation's postage stamps. But that was then, and this is now. Not everyone shares the same respect for the Irish hare. Today, she has her enemies, and the fairy tale has taken a dark turn. Who knows how it will end? The Irish hair, I feel, has caused us huge heartache over the last few years, insofar as they have stripped the fields from good grass, leaving little for the cows to produce good milk. I remember as a child, my grandfather telling stories about the hares coming at night time and sucking all the milk from the cows and leaving the milk that was left sour. But the real reason for that was the hares would go out to the field and eat all the grass There'd be nothing left for the production of milk. That's why the calves didn't do too well off them. To be honest, I would consider them vile, pests, something I could live without. My grandfather, oh, he had no time for them at all. Absolutely no time whatsoever. He would see them when he was out in the fields, counting cattle. He had no problem getting rid of them. You know, a group of hares could strip a field of good grass in no length of time at all. Farmers still hate them, consider them a pest, but you don't see many of them around anymore. You know what, we'd be better off without them. Irish hare numbers are now declining significantly as modern farming methods and machinery alter their landscape. The use of fertilizers and chemicals is widespread and the Irish hare is forced to find a solution or face a catastrophe. So what does the future hold for the Irish hare? The survival of this unique mammal now hangs in the balance. There are, however, signs of hope, and they come from a strange place. Untroubled by air and ground traffic, these timid creatures find peace at airports, despite the noise. Perhaps this is what lies ahead for the Irish hare, living safely in environments free from predators and devastating land changes. Can this adaptation ensure that their status in both legend and landscape will survive for many centuries more? Only time will tell. Heads 
or tales, which will it be?